Joining me now, three of the country's top radio talk show hosts in the country, Washington, D.C.'s Joe Madison, WOL and XM Radio. Here in New York, Steve Malsberg, WOR Radio Network. In Chicago, Steve Cochran of WGN Radio. This program, by the way, being uh, simulcast over WGN Radio. So we're going to ask you the first question, Steve. Well, it's a big break for you, Lou, being on GN. <laughs> I hope you right. respect that. Well, we are flattered and pleased, uh, as always. And always great to have you with us. Thanks, sir. Let's, uh, let's turn to John McCain. And if we can just show everybody and uh, uh, listen in as John McCain is asked a question uh, in New Hampshire. People will judge, uh, will judge by the vigor and the enthusiasm associated with our campaign. Every campaign I've ever been in my life, I've out-campaigned all of my opponents, and, uh, and I'm confident that I will. And thanks for the question, you little jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Senator McCain responding, of course, to the question about whether he ever worried about being debilitated or dying in office because of his age. Well, you know, the thing is, Lou, uh, the vigor and enthusiasm are not anything you'd associate with Senator McCain any time in the recent past. Uh, he has all the... Remember that Tim Conway character? Was it Dorf on the old Carol Burnett show? Uh, that's Much about before how fast, my time, Steve. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> but that's about how fast Senator McCain's been moving. However, that sense of humor he just showed there is key, and I don't think he's shown enough of it. He's one of the yeah. great guests on on late night talk shows and, and any panel show and he's been way too buttoned up and if you remember Bob Dole never got funnier until he, after he lost the election and then suddenly he was America's yeah. grandpa. A lot of these guys are over managed and over programmed and you don't see their real side. And uh, the idea that he was insulting the uh, young gentleman. The punk. Uh, <laughs> he's a pop the jerk. <laughs> I don't think he's going to get much sympathy here. Joe Madison, let's turn to, to Gina, Louisiana. The Gina Six is uh, t Tony Brown, I believe, is the first to have uh, yeah. uh, assigned that, uh, that description of these uh, young fellows. Uh, what's your take? Well, my take, we've been on that for about six months, and quite candidly, this is a serious miscarriage of justice. I'll, I'll jump straight to the solution. I think the governor should pardon... Uh, Michael Bell immediately and I think the governor should also appoint an independent prosecutor to go in and really re-examine the facts of this case. What you don't hear people talking about is that the DA actually went into the school when the black students demonstrated after the nooses were hung and they had asked the principal if they had permission to sit under the tree and the principal told them yes you can sit anywhere you want and that's when the nooses showed up the next day the DA actually went into the school told the black students to go back to class and if they didn't he pulled out a pen Lou and said I can ruin all your lives cut this protest out right. and I can do it with a stroke of a pen well he's obviously going to do it with six and some of these young men had bails so high that they had to spend months in jail and they weren't hardly a flight risk very poor families this is a tragedy right, Joe, but you, you, Joe I, I haven't been uh, familiar with the day-to-day -day testimony of the individual cases involved but there's a, a, a white young man who was beaten severely oh, we no, saw, he wasn't, we, we, beaten, he wasn't severely. beaten severely those no, pictures that not. we saw in no, the report prior to this break he uh, went we're, to we're a made party up. the next day Joe did you see the pictures Joe, that the police me. took Joe it, like you said you aren't even you didn't even know Joe, about the case. What were the pictures so you're, wrong? You're arguing with Steve. You're arguing with somebody who's following right, Joe. Him for you're six great. Months. I'm not fine. But there's and a am, white, a white gentleman who was beaten up, and somebody he, has to be held he accountable. Was, he was released from the hospital the next day. Went to an event and a party. Right. So well, nothing well, happened. None of these well, young men did anything. I'm just stating facts. Listen, I'm just listen, don't don't. I'm just here, stating fellas. facts. It this is a bad situation. But not 20 years of life. You don't put somebody. There is way too many people involved here who could have stopped this before it got this far. There's a larger social issue here, but let me ask you, where are the parents on both sides? What kind of absentee yeah. crap is this where the parents on both sides had no uh, handle on the situation? By the way, including the Gina Six, where these kids have been involved in terrible contact, as well, contact uh, and, and conduct before. Obviously, there's racism involved here. Where are the parents for these kids that put the nooses up? This whole town needs a bath. And, and and, and, and hopefully and the, this process will have it. But these but the Jesus kids somebody's and their families have something to answer for as well. Yes, but that's but the not social mumbo jumbo. Somebody's got to pay. Somebody's got to pay for beating well, up that kid. 20 years, Steve? 20 years? Whatever the evidence shows. Let me just say. Oh, I, I, and I think that Steve Cocker is getting to the point. And 
This is a community of 3,000 people. Now, I was raised in a little town of about 2,500 people. Nothing like this could go on, at least in the town I was raised in, without everyone in that community knowing exactly what transpired, who was behind it, Absolutely. And the fact that the principal said you can uh, sit under a tree, I mean, why should that question even have to be asked in because 2007? That, that's absolutely right. But secondly, right. where right. in the world was the principal, the teachers, the, the parents, as Steve Cochran says? How can you let young men and women get to this point in a community? Because and that's the fix it, in the community. That's it, what's going to cure this, this sore. The, that's what's going to help the community. And that's what this community ought to be worried about. Not TV cameras, not their larger image. They need to process this case. There needs to be fair and, and a just trial here. But to go forward, this community needs to heal. No. And the way to heal is for everybody to step up you, and take you, responsibility you are, for I, missing it here. Gentlemen, I'm sorry. You're going to have to move that trial, a change of venue. You oh, will I, not I, I, I get quite, a fair Joe, trial in I, that. City. Uh, by the way, the jury in this case uh, was all white. Three hours and that was and, it. And, and, and the fact of the matter is that isn't the way this country works. And, it, it, and it's not going to work in Gina, Louisiana. It's not going to work anywhere in the United States. And I don't think I know of anybody in the entire country who would want it to work that way, right, Steve? No, absolutely, absolutely not, except O.J. Absolutely. Simpson had an all-black jury. Well, I'm not, I don't, you oh, know, frankly, it happens. But that's just my if you want to go back to 1995 and that sort of uh, mess, you know, you know I, oh, but let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, yeah. let's stay with what we got. We got enough on our plates to handle Amen. this country right now. Mexico, <laughs> Philippe Calderon, Mexico doesn't end at his borders. What do you think, Steve? Well, you know, the disconnect here is stunning to me. Uh, President Calderon talking about all the jobs he's created and then having no answer to why people don't want to stay and take them if in fact they've been created until the Mexican government takes responsibility for fixing their country they don't need to talk about annexing the United States of America they are part of the problem they are not part of the solution oh god and you said it earlier that what an imperialistic statement if if Bush had said that or any president it all hell would have broke loose around the world. Well, where is President Bush answering that statement and saying that's nonsense and that's not the way of the world, unless maybe he agrees with it, unfortunately. And, and it's cold. It's a cold w word for North American Absolutely. Union. Absolutely. Steve I Cochran, agree. Steve Malsberg, Joe Madison. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. All thanks, the best. Sir. We'll Thank talk you. soon. Up next, we'll be talking with one of the world's leading authorities on Iraq and the Middle East about Iraq's future. Professor Fuad Ajami joins me here next. Stay with us.